Good morning. How are you? Good day, amen. Well, let's stand and ask God's blessing on the service today. And uh, I'm glad to be in his house and glad to be with God's people, aren't you? Amen. Uh, uh, Pat and Yvette are going to be singing for us this morning. We're really looking forward to that. It's been a long time coming. Yes. And uh, so they're, uh, they're going to get in there and bless us today. So I'm looking forward to that, aren't you? Yes. Well, let's, let's ask God's blessing this morning. Father, uh, we thank you for the day and we thank you for who you are and your love and your grace. And I just uh, ask you to in, uh, inhabit our praise and our worship this morning, Father, as we offer it up to you. Um, we just ask your blessing on this service to bless every family that's represented here and bless those that couldn't be here this morning, Lord God. We ask you these things in Jesus' name and everybody said. Amen. Amen. Our God is good, amen. Amen. He is good. Let's worship him. Lord, everything that I have, I give to you today. We lift up our hearts and we lift up our praise because you alone are good, Lord. I 
requires to go that I might receive the prize. Oh, pressing onward, pushing every hedge aside out of my way, cause I want to know you more. to know you more. Oh, Lord, we long after you. I want to touch you. I want to see your face. I want to know you more. Lord, I am reaching for the highest goal. onward, pushing every hedge to side out of my way, cause I want to know you more, more and more. I want to know you, I want to hear your voice, I want to know you more, 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 more. I want to touch you. I want to know you. Oh, we long after you, Lord. I want to know you. I want to hear your voice. I want to know you more. Oh, Lord Jesus. I want to touch you. I want to see your face. I want to know you. I want to know you. I want to hear your voice. I want to know you more and more, Lord. Yes. We long after you this morning, Lord God. We lift up our voice and we worship your holy name. He is good, amen. You are honorable, Lord God. You are worthy. You are precious Lord Lord Jesus Jesus. and we worship worship and honor you today we stand and lift up our hands for the joy of the Lord is my strength we bow down and worship you now how great how awesome is he and together we sing. Lord, we lift our praise to you. Holy is the Lord, God Almighty. The earth is filled with his glory. And holy is the Lord, God Almighty. The earth is filled up our hands for the joy of the Lord oh you are you are my strength the Lord we bow down we worship you now how great how awesome is he and together we sing oh let your worship this morning we honor you Lord Holy are you, Lord, God Almighty. The earth is filled with his glory, and holy is the Lord, God Almighty. The earth is filled with his glory. Oh, it's rising up. Yeah. 
because you are worthy, Lord Jesus. And I give myself away. I give myself away so you can use me. I give myself away. I give Yes, I give myself away. I give myself away so you can use worship me. this morning. Lord yes, Jesus. I give myself away. You alone. I give myself away so you can use me. Here I am. 
here I stand, Lord, my life is in your hands, Lord, I'm longing to see your desires revealed in me, and I give Yes, I give myself away so you can use me. Yes, I give myself away. I give myself away so you can use me. Take my heart, take my And I give myself away. Lord, we lift our praise. We worship. I give myself away so you can use me. I give myself away. I give myself away so you can use me. Yes, I give myself away. I give myself away so you can use me. Yes, I give myself away. I give myself away so you can use me. Lord, we lift our praise, Lord God. We worship and adore you, Lord Jesus. Here at your feet, I'll always be with the angels crying holy. There's not one thing that means as much to me as you, my God, as you, my King. Here in the darkness, I lift my eyes to you. Your light comes shining through. Jesus, I surrender. I draw nearer. I fall down. Oh, Master. Just one, the perfect son. Here in this silence, I hear you speak my name, and I cry out to you, Lord. Oh, Jesus, I surrender. I draw nearer. I fall. Be my Savior, be my shelter, be my God. Oh, Jesus, I surrender, I draw nearer, I fall down. Master, be my Savior. 
shelter be my God oh be my God oh, oh, oh. be my God oh, everything that I learn Lord everything that I do be my God Lord I worship and adore your name be my God oh Jesus Jesus, I surrender, I draw near, I fall down, oh Master, be my Savior, be my shelter, Lord, be my God. Everything that I need, Lord, you are. Everything that I am, Lord, you give to me, Lord Jesus. We worship you, Lord God. We thank you. I'd like to say something. I'm not very good about public speaking at all. But I just want to agree with Daylene. Uh, I, uh, some of you don't know that I was in the hospital for eight months and passed away twice. And God, for some reason, brought me through all of that. And um, I just want to tell you all how important prayer really is. Because I, at my worst time, when I, there was so much of that time I don't even remember, but I remembered the prayers. I felt the prayers. I felt the Lord. I mean, I felt Him. And there's no question about it. And I most definitely felt all your prayers. So it's very, very important to not get discouraged. If you don't immediately see results to your prayers, He hears you. He knows exactly what your needs and your wants are for, whether you need healing, physically healing, or any type of financial healing, or any type of healing, bring it before him. And again and again, and lay him at his feet. Take the fear away and lay everything at his feet. And I'm living uh, example of it does come about. So that's all I had to say. Thank God for a praying church. Lord Jesus, we enthrone you. We proclaim you our King. Standing here in the midst of us, we fill you up with our praise. Yeah. Hey.
so much. What a treat this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. Don't tell me God's not a miracle worker. I'll just, I'll get aggravated if you do. Hallelujah. You know, how many times have you ever had a taste of something Somebody said, here, just try this or uh, uh, just a taste of it, some kind of a drink or something. And it was just so mind-blowing that you thought, good grief, I could eat my weight in that. You ever experienced that? Well, I'm going to tell you that Hebrews chapter 11 is just that. It is a taste. And I believe that Hebrews 11 is continued in heaven because God is keeping record. Let me read Hebrews 11, know what I'm talking about here. The Hebrews Hall of Faith. And I believe that there's a continuation of that chapter in heaven because people like this, we're going to hear the story of how they overcame according to what John wrote in Revelation. We'll hear the, the, the word of their testimony and how they overcame the enemy. I commend them in the Lord this morning. I commend them in the Lord. Only the grace of God could have gotten them through what they've gotten through. The hours of separation, the months in the hospital, him working, traveling, taking care of their property and, 
and the, the loneliness and the... But there's a God. She said it earlier, that here's your prayer and don't give up. Thank you all for singing and blessing us. That blessed me. Did that bless you all? That blessed me. Come on, give God a hand clap of praise. That's, that was just an absolute miracle this morning. And three years is a long time to be ill and not be in the presence of God and the house of God. But um, they didn't backslide through it all, did they? <laughs> that means God is, God is still faithful and He still holds on. So uh, we don't grieve as those that have no hope. Paul said, we've got a, we've got a brighter day coming. I love what Stevie said. We've lived our whole life to get right here for you to go on to heaven. Think about the faith it took to say that. I don't know if I could say that or not. I believe I could if it was in the right moment, but just uh, giving up somebody you love, your soul mate. But we've lived our lifetime, and we forget sometimes. Paul said, for me to die is gain. In other words, bring it on. Bring it on. But for me to, be, for, for me to live is, is your gain. So until the Lord decides, I'm content either way. So I think we should be content either way. And don't get lost in the grief. It's easy to say, I know. But don't get lost in the grief. God knows what's going on. I'm in uh, 1 Peter this morning, chapter 2. And I just want to talk about some foundational truths this morning how important it is to have the Word of God buried in us. Uh, I believe that we're coming uh, into times that the church is going to be challenged more than ever. Uh, this is not a doom and gloom message, but I just think that uh, uh, we're living in those days that Paul talked about. He called them perilous times, and they are perilous. And uh, they're, we're living in lawless times. And uh, so I think the church is going to be pressed. Um, I think the church needs to be pressed a little bit. I don't want anybody to suffer. I don't mean that. But I think the church needs to be pressed. Let me tell you something. Our forefathers were pressed. My grandmother said during the Depression, we didn't have anything. And we wondered where the food would come from. But the church houses were full. And we prayed and we got up every morning and said, this is a day the Lord has made, and God, God brought them through that. And God brought them through World War II. My grandmother said that she hung my grandfather's pillow out on the clothesline every morning because my grandfather cried himself to sleep praying for my father that he would come back from the South Pacific fighting the Japanese. And God brought him home and saved him and, and called him in the ministry. That's, that's, that's how I happen to be here today, by the way. Somebody praying. Oh, I felt that, didn't you? Somebody praying and getting a hold of the horns of the altar and saying, God, intervene. My dad hadn't come back. I wouldn't have been here. Don't say amen. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding you. In uh, 1 Peter chapter 2, at verse 4, it says, coming to him as, as to a living stone, rejected indeed by men, but chosen by God and precious. You also, talking to us now, as living stones are being built up in a spiritual house, a holy priesthood, to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God. I want you to get that. A holy priesthood, that's us. Um, uh, to offer up uh, spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. How many, how many know what we just heard was a spiritual offering? How many, how many know that? How many felt that when they were singing? You could feel the anointing of God. I, I'm really not trying to brag on you all. I, I still, what I mean. I'm, talk, I'm talking about a spiritual thing here. Uh, from one brother and one sister to another. I, I'm just saying that he, right here, was a, this is what we're talking about. I said, God, thank you for the confirmation this morning. Here is a spiritual offering to the Lord. That's exactly what this was. And that's why 
we all felt the anointing of the Lord on it and on us while they sang because it was more than just entertainment. It was a spiritual offering. Big difference. Big difference. So you also, us, as living stones, not dead, but living stones, are being built up a spiritual house. That means it, it is a, um, a progressive work. From the time you get saved until the end of your life, it is a progressive, a continuation, or a perpetual work that God does in us. And if you're like me, you need work every day. And so it is a perpetual work that God does, building us up, and we get stronger, and we get stronger, and we get stronger, and more compassionate, and more caring, and more kind, and more open to the people of God and to sinners alike. I was just reading, I can't remember where this was, just yesterday, the Apostle Paul was writing, and he said, to you, who are spiritually mature. Spiritually mature. If someone falls or falters, you restore them in kindness. How many times has somebody made a mistake? Has some preacher somewhere has made a mistake? And it's like, oh my God, and we're ready to stone these people. But Paul said, those of you that are mature in the Lord, in other words, full of the Holy Ghost, you restore them with kindness. Be careful how you manage that, in other words. Don't condone the sin, but restore, you restore them. Not God restore them. I mean, God will do the work. Don't misunderstand me, please. But we have a job to do, church. We are the body of Christ. We're the hands of Christ, the feet of Christ. You restore them and do it with kindness unless you be tempted in the same manner and fall yourself. Okay? Sidebar, but I know it's a good one. So you as living stones are being built up a spiritual house perpetually, a holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. Therefore, it is also contained in the scripture, Behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect, precious, and he who believes on him will by no means be put to shame. Therefore, to you who believe, he is precious, but to those who are disobedient, the stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. And a, he, he became a stone, talking about Christ, a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense. They stumble, being disobedient to the word, to which they also were appointed. But you, talking about us again, are a chosen uh, generation, a royal priesthood. There's that priesthood thing again. A holy nation, uh, which ought to remind all of us we're not of this world. Amen? We're in this world, but we're not, we're not citizens. We're citizens of another nation. Oh, thank God for that. Thank God my name's in the book. Aren't you glad for that? Um, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Uh, who were once, who were not a people, who once, I'm sorry, who once were not a people, but now, uh, but are now the people of God, uh, who had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. That's what Paul talks about in Ephesians 2, you who are outside the commonwealth. Uh, so I'm talking today about the, the rock of faith. And I borrowed that line from Maryland because of that rock you all got us for Christmas had that cross cut in it. Uh, Maryland said, I'm calling that the rock of faith. I said, man, that's a great name. So I borrowed your phrase this morning, Maryland. I'll give you some royalties on that after a while. I'll buy you a taco, how's that? <laughs> but uh, anyway, um, so I borrowed that phrase, that rock of faith, because our faith is grounded and rooted in the rock of Jesus Christ, who is unshakable, unmovable, 
In Hebrews chapter 13, 8 said, Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. This is what I love about God. He's not all over the map. Uh, he's, the same as, uh, he's the same God today as he was in 1973. And so uh, he, de he doesn't change. He, and God said, I'm the Lord and I change not. So um, when you go back and look, when Jesus was questioning the disciples one day, and he said, well, who do men say that I am? And some were saying that, well, they think you're John the Baptist reincarnated or you're Elijah come back or whatever. And, uh, but he said, well, who do you say that I am? And Peter said, well, you're the Christ. In other words, you're the Messiah, which means you're the anointed one, you're the promised one that Abraham told us about. And, and, and he recognized him as the Messiah. And so um, he said, uh, you, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And then Jesus goes on to say, he follows that by saying, uh, upon this rock, or the, upon, upon the um, confession the, of your faith, because my Father has revealed this to you be on the confession of your faith that you understand that I'm the Messiah. And, and Peter uh, knows this, and even later on at the Mount of Transfiguration, they're blown away by what they see. Him and James and John. They're blown away by what they see. There's Jesus in all of his glory, and there's Elijah and Moses appearing with, with him. And so they're blown away. They, he, they know that they know that they know then that he's the Messiah and that he's not just an ordinary guy. But Peter understands this by faith. And that's what makes it so powerful for you and I is we understand all of this and we take all of this by faith. Haven't seen Jesus, haven't walked the earth with Jesus, but we know that he's alive because we have a relationship and we can tell that he's living on the inside. How many can tell he's living on the inside? You just know that you're a born-again child of God. Your desires change. All, everything about you changes. The things you used to do have no appeal to you anymore because you're in love with Jesus Christ. And so Jesus says upon this rock, or in other words, Peter's confession that Jesus is the Messiah, I'll build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. They will not prevail. So I'm glad today that we can know that uh, there is a foundation that is unmovable. And uh, so, and that's what I'm talking about today is our foundation principles, the things that uh, were instilled in Marilyn and I uh, when we were young. Because in those days, uh, everybody had Sunday school and we were taken to church and we were taken to Sunday school. And... <laughs> Thank God we were. And thank God for those dedicated Sunday school teachers. They volunteered their time. They would go to the church on Saturdays and prepare the chalkboard and the flannel graph. Remember those? I know I'm dating myself. But they would prepare all of that stuff and they would pray over the classroom. Some of them would set extra chairs out by faith. And they would pray, and then Sunday morning we'd have a Sunday school lesson, and we would learn things. And, and, and it made a difference. It made a difference in my life, and if you went to a Sunday school, it has made a difference in your life. And every Sunday we had a verse to memorize through the week, and we came back the next week, and we gave the memory verse. Anybody remember that? Please say yes. So, I mean, only say yes if you did. <laughs> Hello, I want you to lie here. But, um, but they, these people were, were vital to our lives. They were so committed to, to building a foundation in these minds that were so, um, so uh, impressionable. And you may not know it, but you impact people when you do that for a lifetime. And actually it's beyond a lifetime, it's an eternal thing. Sheila, you may not even know this, but those boys of James and Megan still talk about Jesus' church and Miss Sheila. Think about that. For the short amount of time, on and off for, what, a year maybe, she taught those boys. And I'm going to tell you something, that was a handful. I think we didn't thank God for you every Sunday. <laughs> I call them curtain climbers. But um, good boys, we love them, but they high energy. 
If you could corral that in and, and teach them, and, they, and she did. And they still talk about Miss Sheila and Jesus Church after all this time. It, it's just, it, it, it's, it's what the Word of God does. It's the dedication of loyal people, faithful people, to have a heart to minister to, that's difficult. I don't, I'm, I'm so blessed. I don't have an unruly crowd here. I can just preach. You're not throwing stuff at me. You're not running. I've got to go to the bathroom. i got to go do their, you know. You're not doing all this stuff. Uh, you're paying attention, I think, for the most part. But the, so the challenge of teaching that age group is like, whew. Thank you, Jesus, for teachers. And some of you all could testify this morning and tell about what God has done in your family, the wayward children, but the foundation was in there, and we need to have this foundation poured into this next generation so they can survive because there's things coming up on this earth that is going to blow people's mind. As a matter of fact, Jesus said men's hearts would fail them for the things that are coming on the earth. That's how, that's how serious it's going to get. And it's getting serious now. And have you noticed there's deception in the land like we've never seen deception? The people can tell a lie on television and stand right there just as, as matter of fact and just look at that camera and tell you one thing and you know it's not the truth and they can lay down at night, it doesn't seem to bother them. And when the truth comes out, people reject the truth as a lie. People have rejected Jesus Christ as a lie. Peter just said right in here, they, they are unbelievers and they have rejected the word of God. They have rejected it. They've rejected the voice of God, in other words, and, and, and they, they're disobedient because they have rejected God's word. So when we get these, this foundation I'm talking about this morning that many of us are fortunate, at my age group, fortunate enough and blessed enough to have. And, and our Marilyn, our children, that generation had that. It's embedded in them. And thank God this morning my children are in church. Thank God. And the rest of them, they'll co they're coming in. Trevor's in church. The other two will come. Wait and see. Don't give up. I love what she said. Don't give up. Don't give up. Don't give up. That may be the message of the day right there. Don't give up. And, and, and I, I wonder, I wonder, because I know the, how the devil is, he's a liar. I wonder how many times he told her, you'll never stand on your feet again. But she has, by the grace of God. Hallelujah. So the devil's a liar. So we get this foundation down underneath our fifth rib where we're, we're unshakable. And you and I know how to pray. We know how to pray. We know how to come to an altar and we know how to get down and get serious before the Lord, wherever that altar is. And I'm, I'm glad. And we have a foundation and we have a, 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 the, the Word of God as a foundation. Aren't you grateful for God's Word? Oh, I love the Word of God. It is like apple pie or something. I don't know what to compare it to, but it's, it's just amazing. So we are moving into a time in this nation, as I've mentioned, that uh, people are more and more ungodly, and, and uh, the language of people is so abrasive. It's so abrasive. Even young women um, in their teens using language that sailors might have used during World War II. Marines out here somewhere on, uh, on a beachhead might have used it, but you, you certainly don't expect it out of young women. Their language is, is abrasive. And it, it's, it's, it's the culture and, and, and we, we, as a church, have to have an impact on this next culture. We're not going to be here for, for much longer. A lot of us is not going to be here for much longer. We're coming to an age, at my age, I'm 65, moving towards 66. I, I'm not going to live forever. I hope I'll live a few more years, of course. But I'm not going to live forever. And so we've got to hand this off. Somebody's got to, somebody's got to pick this up and say, 
you know, I, I, I'll go do it. I'm glad. I'm glad to do it. When God called me to preach, uh, not that I was Superman, but I, I had this attitude, God, I'll go anywhere you want me to go. I don't care where it is, I'll go. You, you tell me, I'll go. And I've always had that philosophy. Not a, not, this was not a career choice for me. It was a calling. And that's the difference. So Jesus said uh, in Matthew chapter 7, uh, he said, Everyone who hears these words of mine and does them will be like a wise man who built his house upon the rock. We've all heard that. Uh, who, he, uh, when the storm came, it, it, didn't, it didn't shake his house because there's a foundation there. And I've talked about foundations before and talked about the construction of buildings and steel and concrete, and I've talked about those things. So I'm not going to go back into that, but uh, if we, we, we have to build on something that um, is, is unmovable and unshakable, and that foundation is Jesus Christ. He is the rock. He is our rock of faith. And it is that faith in God. You read Hebrews 11. You ought to go home and read it today. And we're fixing to go through that the, starting the 3rd of February uh, on Wednesday nights, the book of Hebrews. It is an incredible book. But you read that 11th chapter, and, and it, every sentence the writer starts out, and by faith, here's what they did. And by faith. And by faith. And, and by faith they left the hospital. By faith this morning, they got up and sang praises to the Lord God. By faith, they did all this. And that chapter right there is just, and by faith, they shut the mouths of lions. I don't, I, I, if, if I could watch the video, I, I hope we can get a replay of some of these things when we get to heaven. I don't know that we will, but I would like to have seen uh, a, a video of Daniel being led to the lion's den. I don't think they were dragging him. I don't think he was screaming. I don't think he was in a panic. I think he just walked down there, just like walking to death row, and they opened that thing up and throwed him down in there. But there was somebody in there ahead of him that God had sent the angel of the Lord to shut the mouths of the lions. And he slept with them lions that night. And the next morning, the king, who had been up all night praying and fasting, walked down there and said, Oh, Daniel. And he hollered back and said, Oh, king, live forever. They opened that up and let him out of there. And the people that accused him got thrown in there. And the Bible said, before their bodies hit the floor, the lions devoured them. So it wasn't because the lions were full. It was because the angel of the Lord walked in there. And Daniel walked down that hall or that corridor or wherever it was where that lion's den was, and he walked down there by faith. And those three Hebrew children who the king said, let me tell you something, I'm going to give you one more chance to battle this image. They said, well, king, we're careful how we answer you. We really are. We're not saying this out of disrespect, but it doesn't make any difference. What you do to us, our God is able to deliver us out of that. But even if he doesn't deliver us out of that, we're not bound to this thing. They had a foundation. Daniel had a foundation. When they brought that food in there, the, what, the, the, the best food in the kingdom of Babylon, the, king, the, the portion from the king's house. Daniel said, what is that? They said, well, this is so and so and so and so. Well, where did it come? Well, well we offered it to these idols over here. Well, he said, I, I can't eat that. I can't eat that. Because it's been offered to idols. That's why he couldn't eat it. And the guy said, dude, if you don't eat this, and you guys start losing weight and start looking bad, he said, they'll take my head off. He said, oh, Daniel said, bring us these items right here and give us a few days and watch and see. And after those 10 days, they, after they brought that food in, Daniel and Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were in there uh, because of the foundation they had. Wait, we, we, we're not going to eat that stuff. We're not going to eat it. They came back in. The Bible said their countenance is more fair than it was 10 days earlier. And the, and the, the, the keeper uh, uh, of the king's people, whoever, uh, that was in charge of them said, 
and I don't get this, but I'm just going to keep doing it. And they honored God, and God honored them. But they couldn't have done that had they not had a foundation. It is the foundation principles that we have as living stones embedded in the rock of Christ that, that makes it possible for you and I to reject sin and say, not doing that, not doing that. Somebody says, here, do this or do that. Nope, nope, not doing that. How come? Uh, it's not just against my religion. Um, it, it's not honoring God, and I don't do that. It's more than just a religion thing. It's a, it's a relationship thing. And I don't want to do anything to damage my relationship. Listen, I was reading just the other day, uh, the Bible said, if the righteous scarcely be saved, where will the sinner and the ungodly appear? It's terrifying when you think about it. We're going to have to live holy. And over in chapter 1, Peter says, uh, the, he says, uh, God says, I'm holy, so you be holy. And uh, being holy is not a, it's not a uh, lifestyle or a hairdo or a, what, it, being holy is a way of life. It's, it's more than Jesus coming to the cross of Calvary for Maybelline or whatever kind of closure. It's, it's not about that. It's about your heart. God looks on the heart. He wasn't worried about what David was wearing when David went out there to slay that giant. He just honored him because he went out there in the name of the Lord and said, you know what, I'm tired of you blaspheming our God. And you got all this military equipment and, and all I've got is this sling, but I'm coming to you in the name of the Lord. And that first stone, not the fifth one, the first stone hit the giant in the forehead and his knees buckled and down he went. Because David had a foundation. David had parents that instilled the Word of God in him. And ladies and gentlemen, these last days, we need the Word of God embedded us like we've never had it embedded before. Uh, Paul goes on to say in Ephesians chapter 2 that we're no longer strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints um, and members of the household of God. I absolutely love the, the fact that he identifies us as the family of God, members of the household of faith. Um, having been built on the foundation of the apostles and the prophets, Jesus Christ himself, here it is again, the chief cornerstone. That's what Peter was talking about. The, the, the stone that they rejected became the chief cornerstone. He's the hinge pin that holds the building up. And uh, in whom the whole building being fit together, uh, fitted together uh, grows into a holy temple in the Lord. In whom you also being built together for a dwelling place of God in the Spirit. Listen, we, we heard uh, an incredible message last week. Pastor Tom preached about being anchored in Christ. And we used to sing that old song where I'm anchored in Jesus. Storms of life I'll brave. Um, I'm anchored in Jesus because he, he has power to save. And, and, and he talked about us being anchored in that. And, and, and not, not anchored in a political system or not anchored in who's in the White House. Or not a, but being anchored in Christ. And, 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 Paul, and Paul's talking about here in Ephesians, uh, we, we who were strangers, who once, we weren't anchored in this at one time. We weren't even allowed in. We were outside the commonwealth of Israel. Go back and read the rest of chapter 2. Outside the commonwealth and the promises. All the promises were given to Israel. What promises? The prophets, the word of God, the promise of the Messiah. All of these things were given to Israel. But in these last days, as Paul talked about, you and I, the church, this church at Ephesus, the Gentiles, in other words, God peeled open the side of Israel and put us down in there and grafted us in. This is what Jesus did at Calvary's cross and grafted us into the family of God. Now, these people that are telling you and preaching that the church has replaced Israel are wrong. This replacement theology is, is a joke. We have not replaced Israel. We've been grafted into Israel. This is what he says. That we're, we're fellow citizens with the saints, with the Jewish people. 
Now, and then Paul goes on to say later on that Christ, having bro broken down the middle wall of separation, has made one man out of two men, the Jew and the Gentile. He goes on to say in another passage, there's no Jew, there's no Greek, there's no male, there's no female, there's just one in Christ. There's one church. It's the church of Jesus Christ. That's the foundational truth that we have and that we live and that we work and, and that we strive for and, and to walk in the fullness of that knowing that Jesus Christ is the rock and the foundation of our faith. And our faith is, our faith is in Him. Our faith is in Jesus Christ. All of the ground is sinking sand, as the song says. Yeah. On Jesus Christ, the rock I'll stand. All of the ground is sinking sand. And that's true. So, uh, the only thing that's going to save our children and our grandchildren is getting the Word of God embedded in them and, and getting, getting a foundation in them. And uh, I, I told uh, Marilyn, I think it was, we were talking about this thing that happened with me uh, a couple weeks ago now. And, you know, I don't know what it was. They, they're not sure what it was. But it happened. And I said, well, maybe it happened for a reason. And uh, when I woke up and heard my grandson praying like that, I said, well, maybe, may, maybe a little bit of rattle. Maybe a little bit of shaking. In other words, God said, can you, can you hear me now, son? Can you hear me now? My dad was preaching one time at Eldridge. Got white as a ghost, began to just sweat profusely. And we knew he was in the middle of a heart attack. And it's a genetic thing in our people, unfortunately, but it is. They run across a old gravel road over there. Wayne and Edith Whitworth lived over there. He said, somebody run over and get some water. And they did and come back over there. My dad sat down on the front pew and they started wiping his brow. And there was no 911. There was none of that. And I remember being terrified. My, his brother, my Uncle Opal, uh, in Des Moines had just... Uh, passed away a year or so before that at age 56, playing the guitar on a platform, fell, just fell out on the floor. He lasted two or three days and he died. And I, I, and I remember my cousin was about 10, 11 years old. I remember going to that funeral. My cousin was, like, was uh, my age and, and he was the baby of the family. And I thought, my God, I hate it for him, but I'm glad it's not my dad. I remember thinking that, and I remember how bad I felt for saying that. And, and, and then when my dad had that episode that night at church, it was on a Sunday night, in the summertime, it's hot, and, and I said to myself, God, don't, don't take my dad, please don't take my dad. Please don't take my dad. And I remember how terrified I was. And just for weeks, I just walked on pins and needles, scared that something would happen. And I remembered that the other day when uh, Devin had gone through this thing and how this thing shook him. And I said, well, God, if that's what it takes to get it done, I thank you. Thank you. And everything give thanks. Thank you. If that was the wake-up call he needed, great. Fantastic. Because it didn't hurt me. I just went to the hospital, ate some bad food. Not much of that. Laid there all day before they gave me a, a cup of jello. I was ready to get home. Get back to the gravy wagon. <laughs> Amen. God works in mysterious ways His wonders to perform. And God's got a way of getting your attention. And He's got a way of getting you to answer the spiritual telephone. Hallelujah. So it's... What saved me and what saved my wife ultimately was having a biblical foundation. Marilyn grew up in the same kind of church I did under Gary's dad's ministry, who was a Holy Ghost, hellfire and brimstone preacher, and saw a lot of people come to the Lord Jesus Christ and, and filled with the Holy Spirit, me and her being two of those people. Thank God for him and thank God for people like my dad and my Uncle Virgil that went before us and laid a foundation down and preached it like it was. They didn't compromise it. 
They preached it like it was. They weren't hateful about it. They weren't mean. They weren't threatening. It may have sounded threatening. If you were, lo if you were lost and living in sin, it may have sounded threatening. It wasn't threatening. It was conviction. It was God saying, you need to get saved. Or you're going to spend your eternity in hell. Period. So uh, don't misunderstand me. It's not just the foundation that saves you. We still had to confess our sin. We still had to have a, a salvation experience with Christ. It's not automatic just because you're raised in Sunday school or just because you, you have a foundation or a Jesus church. It's not automatic. All I'm saying is that foundation comes up like a flood in you when crisis comes. When crisis comes, the first thing you start doing is praying. When crisis would come in my life, when I was not saved, the first thing I would do is start praying and promising God what I was going to do. Even though I didn't follow through with a lot of that. And when my daughters were born, the first daughter was born, God, I'll serve you all the days of my life. Was I serving God? No. Not even close. Fever come one time, we was living at Camden, and her folks were down there, and Jeannie was burning up, and I don't remember what it was. It was a high one, 104 and 5, and they were giving her alcohol baths in the sink. She was little, and I remember uh, them leaving, having to come back to Kansas City on a Sunday afternoon or evening, and I'm thinking, my God, don't let them leave. I, I didn't know what to do. We didn't know what to do. We didn't really run to the doctor. I don't know why we didn't, but I just remember praying and saying, God, God. Please help us here. I'll, do, I'll serve you. I'll do it. And, you know, and, and God touched that baby, and that fever broke finally. And, and, uh, and she was fine. And, uh, but but did, I, did I follow through on that? Well, not immediately I didn't. And every time something came up, it was like, well, you, you promised me last time, you know. And like, yeah. I, I'd say some of y'all have been through that too. But um, finally got it right one day. By the grace of God. How many know he doesn't give up on you? He just doesn't give up on you. How many know, how many know David said his mercy endures forever? He's not willing that any should perish. And, and he looks so far beyond. And I've had to tell myself that message I preached about Jericho a few weeks ago. I can't tell you how many times I've had to tell myself. And Marilyn's had to remind me a couple of times. They saw the finished product. And I was trying to put my mind in that story, just meditating it on one day. And I said, if, if, my, if my leader said to me, my church leader said to me uh, a, a, as a congregant, um, well, we're going to go out here and um, march around this empty field and God's going to give us this land. And then a church is just going to miraculously appear. Could, it, could I do that? Would I follow that person out there to do that? Because isn't that basically what Joshua said? God spoke to me, and they, they're looking at these walls, and they're saying, wait a second, you want us to walk around there one time a day for six days, and don't say nothing. And on the seventh day, we're going to walk around seven times, and then at the end of the seventh time, we're going to blast, and all this is going to go away. How unbelievable is that? So could I, as a human being, if my leader said to me, or if I said to you, oh, we're going to go out here and walk around this land, there's some land out here, we're going to walk around it, and, and then when we get done, we're going to do this so many times, God said, it would have to be God said, of course, uh, not just me. But, if I, but, but even if God said it, and I went out there, and I'm wondering, how many people actually follow me out there and meet me out there like at 8 o'clock on a Sunday morning and say, oh, we're going to do this, and there's, the church is just going to spring up out of nothing, and people would be probably wondering, said, well, yeah, he's going to be okay, I think. <laughs> We're going to pray for him. He's probably going to be okay. I'm just telling you, the, the, this, this foundational thing we do is by faith. This foundational thing we do, that Jesus died on the cross, that he shed his blood, and that he arose again the third day, is an unbelievable story. And as a matter of fact, I've written a song about it. Christy's going to record it for me. Uh, about how unbelievable it is. And, and it's an unbelievable story, but believe it is true. And the fact that he went to heaven and, and sent back the Holy Spirit to guide this ship 
through this earth and to save untold millions. John says, and, and, and Judas, uh, or uh, Enoch also says, in the book of Jude, he saw saints coming without number. Without number. It looks like sometimes the devil's going to win, but he saw, he saw saints coming without number. So... It's this foundation. So you still have to ask forgiveness of your sin, uh, but it's the foundation that, that, that is important. But let me say this. If you're raised up and have no foundation, God will save you just the same. It's a remember me when you enter your kingdom moment because God's grace is incredible. So you don't have to have the foundation to get saved. I'm not preaching that at all. I'm just saying it will help you weather the storm if you have that. And this foundation, these principles that we have uh, will not only last a lifetime, as I said, but they will, uh, they will last throughout all of eternity. And so um, you can still be saved uh, no matter whether you've had these truths or not. So, but we, we, live in a, we live in a time where... Uh, it's going to be a challenge um, to moving forward, I'm convinced. And it's going to be difficult uh, days ahead, I'm convinced. And I'm not preaching uh, gloom and doom, but uh, I just think there's going to be challenges ahead for the church. And, and the foundational principles that we have inside of us that have been instilled in us are going to matter. They're going to matter and they're going to pay off. So would you stand with me this morning, please, before we go? Here we are standing in your presence. Here we are standing in your presence. Shekinah glory come down. Shekinah glory come down. Here we are standing in your presence. Here we are standing in your presence. Hallelujah. Shekinah glory come down. Release the full. Release the fullness of your spirit. Shekinah glory come. Shekinah glory come. Here we are standing in your presence. Here we are standing in your presence. Shekinah glory come down. Shekinah glory. Here we are standing in your presence. Here we are standing in your presence. Shekinah glory come down. Release the fullness of your spirit. Shekinah glory come. Shekinah glory come. Release the fullness. Hallelujah. Well, I thank God for the Word of God and for foundational principles. And, and I know many of you are rooted and grounded in this, and it's important. And I know you've instilled it in your children, and I'm going to tell you something. It is seed that will come up in their life. Absolutely. I believe that. I want to say to our Internet audience this morning that uh, if you need help, you need uh, help understanding the plan of salvation, um, need information about salvation, need a Bible, Anything you need, please contact us. There's information uh, following this message today that uh, we'll be glad to, to discuss with you. You can call us or email us, and we'll get a hold of you. So we thank you for watching us. I want to pray over this congregation today, and I also want to pray over our nation. And uh, I also want to pray over this uh, new administration. I know that some of us will think that, well, the election didn't go my way, so I'm not going to do anything, and I'm totally opposed, and blah, blah, blah. Uh, but it's still biblical to pray for these people. Uh, these people need guidance, whether they will hear it or not. Uh, the prayers of the church matter. And I think we need to pray for our nation. We need to pray for 
uh, this new administration um, that uh, there will be some guidance from the Holy Spirit and that they'll listen to it. And uh, who knows? Uh, God can give somebody a dream or something. Things can change. So let's pray to together. Uh, join me, if you will. Father, in the name of Jesus, uh, we pray over this congregation this morning, and I thank you for them, Lord God. And God, I pray over our nation, and I pray over this new administration, Lord God, uh, that, we, uh, that you bless this nation and you bless them, that, Lord God, you'd help them. I pray that you'd visit them, Lord God. Uh, no matter what their uh, policies are that we may not agree with, I pray that you'd visit them, God, as only you can do. And God, we know none of these things caught you by surprise. Uh, you're not caught off guard. You're not, uh, you wasn't sucker punched by any of this. Uh, your word says it's you that sets kings up and takes them down. So God, we, we trust you. So God, we ask your blessing on America. We ask your blessing on this Biden administration, Lord God, as they lead this nation, Lord God, and help all of us. God, we pray over the church, uh, Lord God, that uh, the church would arise and, and pray like never before, Lord God. Father, we ask you to go with us as we leave this place. Uh, meet the needs of your people, Lord God. Bless every life and every family represented here today. We ask you in Jesus' name. And everybody said? Amen. One more time, Pat and Yvette, thank you so much for blessing us this morning. It was, it was a joy. Lord's my shame.